Before we render the cloud, let me briefly explain the parameters involved in rendering volumes. Here, I have simply built a scene. There is a grid, an explosion, two lights, and a camera. The explosion can display color and depth. Here, I take the explosion as a rendering example to talk about how the render parameters work. I have set the material for the explosion and also created a mantra renderer. Delete this mantra, create a new one. I will start with the default parameters. We first render an image based on the default parameters. Modify the resolution, 1024 by 576. Click Render. Unfold the panel here. Click this button. It can make the image size fit to the viewport. We mainly explain the parameters under sampling and limits. Firstly, I usually use the PBR mode for the rendering engine. It's physically based rendering, which is more realistic. I will skip the depth and motion blur below and start with parameters under sampling. The first is the pixel samples. The default is 3x3. Three three. It means each pixel is sampled 3 times in the horizontal direction and 3 times in the vertical direction. 9 samples in total per pixel. The more the sampling times, the better the image quality, the less the amount of noise in the image. We can see there is still a small amount of noise in it. If we want to know the principle of the pixel samples, we need to know how Mantra samples the scene. Firstly, Mantra sends our primary rays from the camera into the scene based on the number of pixel samples. When a primary ray hits a surface, Mantra fires secondary rays to the lights. These secondary rays can be divided into two types, direct and indirect. The secondary ray will judge if there is an obstacle on the way. If there is an obstacle, the object will be in the shadow. If not, the object will be fully illuminated. The pixel samples actually represents the amount of primary rays per pixel. The more the primary rays, the more accurate the color of the pixel, thus a high quality image is obtained. But we cannot improve the image quality merely by increasing pixel samples, otherwise it will increase the render time greatly. We can use these parameters together to improve the render quality. Well, the second parameter, ray variance anti-aliasing. After it's enabled, the number of secondary rays will vary according to the variance of anti-aliasing. Ray variance anti-aliasing will send more rays only in the areas they are needed, which can optimize the number of secondary rays and reduce unnecessary rendering time. We toggle this parameter and take a look. Now there is only the main ray samples and several parameters related to rendering volumes. When it's turned off, the number of secondary rays is fixed, which is determined by the main ray samples. Let's render a picture and take a look. Save this picture. You can see there is a lot of noise in the image. We can raise the main ray samples to increase the number of secondary rays. These noises are reducing gradually. Although it can improve the quality of the image, it is not conducive to rendering optimization. We increase the mean ray samples again. Obviously, the rendering is much slower than before, and the image quality is indeed much better. There is little noise in the background. If we control the number of rays only through the minimum ray samples, it will send the same amount of secondary rays to each pixel, thus it will cause a problem. Some areas with enough samples do not need excessive samples, while in some areas with much noise, the samples are probably insufficient. So Houdini offers a parameter to evaluate the number of secondary rays based on anti-aliasing. It will send secondary rays according to the need to balance the render quality and the render time. So we usually check this parameter when rendering. There are two types of the variance color space. One is linear, the other is gamma 2.2. We usually use gamma 2.2. It allows the darker areas to get more samples, 
but the difference is not very obvious. Generally, it's fine to keep gamma 2.2. There is a maximum number of indirect samples below, which is the maximum number of indirect rays. If we want to adjust indirect lighting, we can come to the limits, increase the volume limit. We save this image and render another one. Lower the mean ray samples and restart render. OK, it's over. Let's compare it with the previous one. We can see now the explosion is brighter than the previous one. The reason is that the flare illuminates the volume. The flare itself is a light source. When the volume limit is not on, it can only illuminate itself but it cannot illuminate the surrounding volumes or the environment. When the volume limit is enabled, the explosion will act like the light. If the value of the volume limit is zero, the explosion only illuminates itself and does not affect surrounding objects. We can see that there are reflect limit, refract limit, diffuse limit, and SSS limit. They control the bounce times of indirect rays on different kinds of materials. If these bounce limits are all zero, the effect of the qualities on the sampling is invalid. These qualities control the corresponding indirect lighting qualities. Improving these qualities is equivalent to increasing the amount of indirect rays. When revariance anti-aliasing is disabled, the quality of indirect lighting cannot be controlled. In this case, whether it is direct rays or indirect rays, the number of ray samples will be the main ray samples. We click Images, then Extra Image Planes, check Direct Lighting and Indirect Lighting to separate these two channels and view them individually. Render it again. Unfold the image layers. We can see the direct lighting of the volume. That's it. There is a lot of noise in it. Then the indirect lighting of the volume, a lot of noise as well. Rendering optimization is actually to reduce the noise and improve the image quality. OK, we display the color layer and continue to see the following parameters. Check the ray variance anti-aliasing. The next is the max ray samples. As said before, when we check the revariance anti-aliasing, it will increase the secondary rays according to the needs. The range is within the main ray samples and the max ray samples, that is, from 0 to 9. Of course, we can adjust these parameters. OK, let's render another one. There is less noise now. Because the max ray samples has been increased to 10, the noise level below controls the noise level you can accept in the image. The smaller the noise level, the more the sampling times of secondary rays. Of course, it won't exceed the max ray samples. When the noise level is zero, as long as there is a little noise in the image, the secondary rays will sample according to the max ray samples. Similarly, if the noise level is higher, the secondary ray samples will tend to the main ray samples, so the number of samples will be reduced. Of course, it won't be less than the main ray samples. Therefore, the smaller the value of the noise level, the more the times of ray sampling, the quality of the image will be better. The global quality controls the multiple of diffuse quality, SSS quality, reflection quality, refraction quality, and volume quality. You can improve the overall quality by it. Generally speaking, I don't recommend raising the global quality. You can improve a certain part specifically. Then the diffuse quality. Let's first look at the effect of the diffuse channel. It is black. We need to increase the diffuse limit. Then render another one. OK, the render is done. Now the gray background is brighter than before. It is illuminated by the flare, but with a lot of noise. Let's take a look at the indirect diffuse channel. There is indeed a lot of noise in it. We can improve the diffuse quality to reduce the noise of indirect lighting. Let's render again. Save the current frame. OK, now the noise in the gray background is much less than before. Let's take a look at the indirect diffuse. Compared with the last one, 
Obviously, the noise is much less than before. Additionally, we need to pay attention. Raising the diffuse quality will reduce the actual noise level. We said just now that the noise level controls the level of noise you can accept in the image. The smaller the noise level, the more the times of resampling. After we raise the diffuse quality, the noise of indirect diffuse will be reduced. Thus, the indirect lighting for diffuse will sample more rays. The quality of the indirect lighting will be better. The other qualities also affect the actual noise level. The SSS quality, reflection quality, refraction quality are not involved currently. We turn them off. Then the volume quality. Let's take a look at the image. Now there is some noise on the explosion. Let's see the direct and indirect lighting of the volume. This is the direct lighting. We can see the density is dark. The noise is not obvious. Let's see the indirect lighting. There is a lot of noise on the indirect lighting layer. We raise the volume quality. Render it again. Save the current frame. OK, it's over. Let's compare it with the last one. We can see the indirect lighting has less noise than before. Switch it to color. Set the diffuse quality and the volume quality of indirect lighting to 1. The volume step rate controls how many voxels a ray passes through to sample one time. The volume is composed of many voxels. It is different from geometry. When sampling the geometry, the rays just reach its surface. But when sampling the volume, the rays need to pass through the voxels. We know the volume usually has a large quantity of voxels. If so many voxels need to be sampled one by one, the calculation of the sampling is very large. So here we can control the volume stamp rate. 0.25 by default means sampling every 4 voxels. When it is 1, each voxel is sampled once. When it is 2, each voxel is sampled twice. During the sampling process, it evaluates the shader and accumulates the density of the volume. Generally, I don't set it to over 0.25. The volume shadow step rate below is similar to the volume step rate. It only samples the shadow. You can also control the number of shadow samples. Next, the stochastic transparency. Enable it, we can control the stochastic samples. I hide the gray background. Render it and take a look. Well, you can see there are many small particles in the transparent area. I usually use the stochastic samples to improve the quality of transparent areas. We can increase it and take a look. Okay, now the noise in the transparent area is basically gone. This is the role of the stochastic samples. After checking the sample log below, Although there is some noise in the image, it will not flicker when you render the sequence. Lastly, the random seed. It can vary the sampling. OK, these are the parameters under sampling. The parameters under the limits mainly control the bounce times of indirect arrays. OK, so much for the parameters about the renderer. Besides, there is a sampling quality under the light. Let's take a look. Yes, it is. It can also increase the number of resamples. Raising this value can also reduce the noise in the picture. Under the environment light, it works the same way. OK, back to mantra. In addition, here you can see the maximum number of indirect samples is 20. If the quantities below are 0, the system will calculate the max samples one time, which is 10 currently. Now the diffuse quality is 1. Then it is 10 plus the value of multiplying the global quality and the diffuse quality and the max ray samples. If we increase the diffuse quality to 2, the maximum number of indirect samples is raised to 30. If you also enable the SS quality, reflection quality, and refraction quality, the maximum number of indirect samples will continue to increase. By multiplying each quality and the max ray samples and the global quality respectively, and then adding the results up, like this, the maximum number of indirect samples comes out. Additionally, we need to pay attention to the limits here. These parameters need to be adjusted carefully because increasing these parameters will multiply the render time. 
In this cloud case, I didn't enable the volume limit. Okay, so much for the parameters about the volume rendering. Then back to the scene.